SpaceX has just built a strange, mysterious new structure right next to Starship's static fire stand at Massey's site. And naturally, it's raising a lot of questions. What exactly is this thing? And what role could it play in future testing of Starship version 3? We might get our first real clue during the upcoming static fire of Ship 39. But if you want to understand what this structure is right now, let's break it down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX's Starbase complex in South Texas is undergoing a major, carefully planned transformation. The company is clearly preparing its infrastructure for a higher launch cadence and the next generation vehicle configuration, Starship version 3. Beyond the ongoing teardown and upgrades at Launch Pad 1 and the system level testing underway at Pad 2, Massey's site is becoming just as critical, and what SpaceX is building there has raised more than a few eyebrows. On December 13th, observers at Massey's site noticed SpaceX erecting a large steel frame structure, standing vertically atop the existing test stand support, positioned right next to the flame bucket. That location alone strongly suggests a direct link to engine testing activities. From the available images, the structure features a dense grid of steel members at its base, clearly designed to handle heavy loads. Viewed from the side, it has a D-shaped profile, while from the front, it appears rectangular. The frame is mounted onto the test stand's existing support structure, positioned close to the flame trench, and it extends downward to connect with the stand's legs, likely to help dampen vibration during static fires. The upper section includes additional framing that appears intended for pipes or interface hardware that hasn't been fully installed yet. And above the main vertical frame, another unusual steel structure can be seen. This upper frame may serve as a mounting point for future piping, interfaces, or mechanical systems. Its exact purpose isn't immediately clear, but its design strongly suggests a modular system that's still under construction. Then, on December 20th, observers spotted yet another mysterious addition, a vertical gantry-like structure installed nearby, adding even more intrigue to what SpaceX is building at Massey's site. And it didn't stop there. Later that same night, SpaceX was seen transporting a massive assembly made up of multiple horizontal steel panels and beams. From a distance, it appeared as thick steel plates stacked together, forming a tall, wide, flat plane connected to a central frame with a large vertical beam running through it. Above that, diagonal X-bracing was clearly visible, reinforcing the structure and enabling it to handle heavy loads. Altogether, the assembly took on the appearance of a giant truss wall or structural section, estimated to stand roughly 10 to 15 meters tall, once upright and exceptionally wide. Because of its sheer size and weight, SpaceX had to move it at night, laid horizontally across two self-propelled crawler vehicles, each equipped with hundreds of wheels. So, what is SpaceX actually building here? Basically, this new structure looks a lot like the booster quick disconnect gantry at Pad 2, but rotated into a vertical orientation for the ship. Its primary role is likely to support fueling, autogenous pressurization, and fluid connections during static fire tests. Combined with the ship quick disconnect V3 system that was already installed at Massey's site, this frame allows SpaceX to properly test the physical and fluid interfaces between the ship and ground systems. That makes both cryogenic testing and static fires far more realistic, especially important with Raptor 3, which brings higher chamber pressures and increased propellant flow rates. In that sense, this structure likely serves as a backbone for propellant loading hardware, pressurization systems, and added stability to handle vibration during high thrust tests. But there's another interesting theory. Several experts believe this structure could also be used to test ship-to-ship -ship refueling or docking concepts, particularly for tanker and depot variants planned for on-orbit refueling. The height of the frame appears sufficient to interface with the new refueling ports on Ship 39, the first true Starship V3 prototype. If that's the case, SpaceX may already be laying the groundwork for ground-based refueling tests, well before attempting a full demonstration in orbit, which could realistically begin around mid-2026. Right now, the structure isn't fully complete. In theory, it could even involve two ships on the platform at once, but additional reinforcement and bracing would almost certainly be required. Still, if this interpretation is correct, this isn't a minor upgrade at all. 
it would mark a major push to increase Starship V3 testing efficiency, and a clear sign that Massey site is becoming a key testing hub for some of the most critical systems SpaceX needs to make Starship fully operational. This structure is expected to be completed fairly soon, likely within the next one to two weeks, as SpaceX is currently leaving room for upcoming cryogenic testing of Ship 39, a vehicle that has been making solid progress recently. In the latest updates from Starbase, SpaceX has also added autogenous pressurization raceways to the integration stand. These additions are believed to support the final assembly of Ship 39. But what exactly does autogenous pressurization mean? In simple terms, these external lines allow Starship to repressurize its main propellant tanks using methane and oxygen gas tapped directly from the engines themselves. This prevents a vacuum from forming inside the tanks during ascent, especially while those six hungry Raptor engines beneath Starship are firing at full power. Pretty cool stuff. According to the current schedule, Ship 39 will first undergo cryogenic testing, expected to take place later this week or early next week, assuming there are no unexpected delays. Once the cryopressure tests are complete, the vehicle will return to the production site for engine installation. After that, Ship 39 will be transported back to Massey's site for static fire testing. This entire test campaign is expected to peak in early January, marking one of the most comprehensive ship-only Starship test sequences SpaceX has ever attempted. Beyond Ship 39, SpaceX is also moving quickly on the booster side. Booster 19 is being stacked at a rapid pace, and it's expected to roll out to Massey's site for pressure testing as well, likely within the next couple of weeks. At the same time, progress at Pad 2 is accelerating just as fast. Around midday on December 21st, workers transported a new actuator for the chopsticks to the site, and it's expected to be reinstalled shortly. Earlier this month, SpaceX had removed the left chopstick actuator, the hydraulic unit responsible for opening and closing the arms. After removal, the actuators were shipped to Sanchez site, a nearby fabrication facility, likely for upgrades or modifications. With that work now complete, the hardware has begun making its way back to the launch site. Meanwhile, the newer orbital launch mount, too, continues to make rapid progress toward full operational readiness. Beyond the chopsticks themselves, significant assembly work is underway around the launch mount and its associated ground support systems. The upper section remains wrapped in scaffolding as final adjustments and last-minute installations continue. Recent testing activities have included lowering the protective doors on the hold-down arms, a critical step in verifying their ability to withstand exhaust flow and acoustic loads from Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines. One of the most notable technical differences at Pad 2 is the redesigned approach to propellant connections. Unlike earlier pads that relied on a single quick disconnect system for the booster, Pad 2 uses two dedicated quick disconnect systems, one for liquid methane and one for liquid oxygen. This design improves reliability and reduces system complexity during fueling, and it's a change that's directly reflected in the new Booster Version 3 design. And still at Starbase, there's another major upgrade underway in a critical area that doesn't get talked about nearly enough, the Air Separation Unit, or ASU. Construction at the ASU site has been moving aggressively throughout December 2025, taking advantage of the gap ahead of Flight 12 to push infrastructure work forward. After securing environmental approvals, SpaceX began serious construction back in July 2025. Since then, the site has completed land clearing, site preparation, and structural work, and is now in the process of installing its core equipment. That includes large air compressors with bull gears driving multiple compression stages, along with critical motors and major components that have been transported overnight from the port of Brownsville. This marks a key transition from foundation work into the installation of cryogenic distillation hardware. So, why does this matter? Once operational, the ASU will allow SpaceX to produce liquid oxygen, Starship's primary oxidizer, along with liquid nitrogen and essential purge gases directly from the air on site, using cryogenic distillation. This dramatically reduces Starbase's dependence on hundreds of cryogenic tanker truck deliveries from off-site suppliers, which has become one of the biggest logistical and cost bottlenecks. When the ASU comes online, expected sometime in 2026, it will enable faster tank farm refills, increase site autonomy, 
reduce supply chain risk, and most importantly, support the high launch cadence SpaceX is aiming for with Starship V3, potentially dozens of flights per year, all while laying the groundwork for future missions toward Mars. Overall, 2026 is shaping up to bring the biggest transformation Starbase has seen since its founding in 2014, when SpaceX first began acquiring land in Boca Chica, marking a true turning point from an experimental site into a fully industrialized launch complex built for Starship at scale. Because of that rapid expansion and peak level growth, SpaceX has inevitably become a target for outside scrutiny and disruption. The clearest example is the latest controversy involving SpaceX and the Wall Street Journal, centered on the explosion of Starship during Flight 7 on January 16, 2025. Flight 7 happened nearly a year ago, but the story was suddenly dragged back into the spotlight. On December 21, 2025, the WSJ published an article it claimed was based on documents from the FAA. The report argued that the explosion posed a much greater danger than originally disclosed, particularly to commercial aircraft flying over the Caribbean. The article amplified claims that debris could have caused catastrophic damage to airplanes, potentially leading to passenger fatalities. It also alleged that SpaceX failed to immediately notify the FAA via its hotline, delaying critical information, and that the designated hazard zone was limited to U.S. airspace, overlooking international regions. On top of that, WSJ suggested that risks would grow significantly as Starship ramps up toward 200 to 400 launches per year, especially with SpaceX planning to launch from Florida starting in 2026. Seeing these claims as exaggerated and misleading, SpaceX responded forcefully. The company posted directly on X, calling out the WSJ by name, stating, yet another misleading story by the WSJ. The reporters were clearly spoon-fed incomplete and misleading information from detractors with ulterior motives. At the same time, SpaceX reaffirmed that public safety remains its top priority. No aircraft were ever placed at risk, and all debris stayed fully within pre-coordinated hazard zones established in advance with the FAA and the U.S. Space Force.